Lesson 12.1c, Pythagorean Theorem in Three Dimensions. We can use the Pythagorean Theorem to solve problems in three dimensions. We can find an unknown measure of a 3D object. So here I have a box, and you can see right here, this side is 9 inches, and it's 12 inches across. This side right here is 4 inches tall. Now, I have this stick, and if you look, this stick is longer than the box. Even if I try going on a diagonal like this, it's longer than the box. How can we get this stick to fit in this box? Well, we can actually put one corner down into here like this and let the other one go up at the top corner like that. We could do it diagonally that way. We could even do it diagonally this way. Either way, it'll work. So what is the length of the longest object that will fit into the box? We know it is 12 inches across and 9 inches here. We also know that it's 4 inches tall. Well, the longest object will be the length of the top corner of the box diagonal to the bottom corner inside the box. So remember the Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's one leg squared plus the other leg squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. And remember that since we're dealing with lengths, all the values of a, b, and c will be positive numbers because lengths are positive numbers. So our goal is to find the length of r, and we're going to do it by using s. So S is the diagonal on the bottom of the box. R is going from the top corner across to the opposite corner at the bottom. We know the height is 4 inches. We know the width is 9 inches. We know the length is 12 inches. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to do A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And that's going to be W squared plus L squared is equal to S squared. We have a 9 inch width, so that's going to be 9 for the width, and we square it, and we're going to do 12 squared, and it's going to equal S squared. Well, 9 times 9 is 81, and 12 times 12 is 144. We add them together and get 225. We know that is S squared. Now, before when we did this in the other videos, we put a radical sign around the 225 to find the square root of 225 and then removed that 2 exponent? Well, this time we're not. We're going to stop right here because we need to use s squared as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We need that to be squared. So we're going to use it as leg b squared in the Pythagorean formula. So now we know that that is s squared. We have this triangle, we know that this is 225 for s squared. It's not just 225, it's 225 as s is squared. Now that we found this triangle right here, we're going to use this to find r as the hypotenuse. So we found the diagonal measure in the bottom of the box, S. Now we use S to find R. We're going to use S as one of the legs, and we're going to use this 4-inch height as one of the legs. So we have height squared plus S squared is equal to R squared. R is our hypotenuse. And the height is 4 inches, so we have 4 squared, which is 16. We know S squared is 225, so now we can just put that in there. We know it's equal to R squared. We add 16 plus 225, and that's 241. Now we take the 2 exponent away from the r and put the radical sign around the 241, and we find the square root of 241, and it's approximately 15 and 5 tenths, 15 and a half. So we know r is approximately 15 and a half inches. We used s to find r. 
the hypotenuse of an imaginary triangle from a top corner across to an opposite bottom corner. The length of the longest object that will fit in the box is 15 and 5 tenths inches or 15 and a half inches that is laid on a diagonal. Now, what if we're looking for the greatest length in whole inches? No decimal, whole inches. Well, then the greatest length would be 15 inches. Remove the decimal. So watch out for tricky wording in problems. You may read that and think, oh, well, the greatest length, but it says in whole inches. So it has to be a whole number like 15, no decimal or fraction. By positioning an object along the diagonal of a box, we'll be able to put an object inside that is longer than the box. Let's try some higher order thinking. An isosceles right triangle is a right triangle with congruent legs. Here we have an isosceles right triangle. Here's the right angle and the legs are congruent. Here's the hypotenuse. If the length of each leg is represented by x, because they're the same, they're both x, we can write an algebraic expression that can be used to represent the length of the hypotenuse. So remember in the Pythagorean theorem it said a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, if this is a and this is b and this is c, that means x is a and x is b, or a is x and b is x. So if a is equal to x and b is equal to x, well then when we do the Pythagorean theorem, instead of a squared we'd have x squared and instead of b squared we'd have x squared. And they'd be equal to c squared. Well, then taking the square root of both sides we remove that two exponent and put a radical sign around the left side. Or we can say c is equal to the square root of x squared plus x squared. So we've discussed this in the previous videos. Taking the square root of both sides means we remove the exponent on the right side of the equal sign by putting the left side in a radical sign. And then we find the square root of 64. Well, we did the same thing for this isosceles triangle. We had c squared. We removed the two exponent by putting a radical sign around the left side, even though it has exponents up here, we still put the radical sign around them and the exponents. The x variables remain squared. We're finished with lesson 12.1 and we're moving on to 12.2. We're going to be testing the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And remember, if you want to mail something long in a box, put it on a diagonal and it may fit into a smaller box. Have a wonderful day and join me for 12.2. Bye.